Yeah, um, I'm building officer with the organisation. I look after our buildings and facilities for the northern half of the country. Uh, energy use in our built environment is our, and the built environment is our biggest energy user. And over the years, we we have installed. Uh, wood chips, buildings, wood pellets, um, and uh, we identified uh, what was happening in Europe and uh, we, Parikul Kylie had a research program on AD uh, and uh, primarily looking at opportunities for other uses of grass and AD, uh, feedstock for AD was, uh, you know, uh, be, was obviously a, an attractive option um, for Ireland. I'm just going to look at if energy use in the country uh, just to put it into perspective, uh, I'm going to um, talk a little bit about the different uh, potential, uh, uh, how AD can fit in, we'll say, to a circular economy model, uh, following up work from MTU with biorefinery glass, where, you know, if you're, if you're assembling grass, there, there are other things you can do as well as take energy. Uh, and uh, the whole how AD might fit into a whole bioeconomy um, uh, model. So, um, just this is a, a, a slide from um, uh, SEAI and uh, shows uh, that we you know most of our energy is imported. Uh, the, the 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 dark blue. Uh, we have some uh, indigenous uh, fossil fuel, the gas field. And uh, we have a small amount of indigenous renewables, uh, a growing amount, but relatively uh, small. Um, and the categories of energy then, if we look at, uh, you know, the, the different modes, uh, you know, electricity, while uh, wind and solar are very important, electricity at the moment is only about 20% of our total energy with heat and transport uh, representing about 40% each. You can see some drop off there uh, due to COVID. Um, and energy flows, again, SEAI figures, oil is the big beast. Natural gas is, you know, the second uh, the second biggest component of our energy. And indeed, uh, you know, uh, I think there's a, a figure that twice as much energy goes through the gas grid as the electricity grid. And that's because a lot of our electricity comes from um, uh, gas. Our renewable energy commitments, uh, Ireland, uh, EU had a 20% target for 2020. Ireland had a discounted uh, figure of 16%. And then we had different subcategories, 40% electricity, 12% heat, 10% transport. You know, we, we, we weren't on top of the class. You know, we missed uh, uh, each component uh, of our energy, heat in particular. We, you know, we only were about half. Um, the transport was basically that the oil companies were told you have to put X amount of biodiesel or bioethanol into your fuel mixes and uh, our electricity was growing and indeed the wind and solar will continue to be important uh, components. Just, you know, a background to our woody biomass. We're in the relegation zone, you know, uh, Malta, the Netherlands and ourselves compared to some other countries with very high afforestation rates. So tr traditional type of biomass that's available is different uh, in different countries. Just a one on a uh, slide there on wind again, just to put some things into perspective, wind and solar are fantastic, but you know, they're not dispatchable and they're within uh, uh, less than a 24 hour period. You can go from being very well matched, your energy, electricity demand and your, your capability to uh, produce it from wind. Uh, the wind dies down and all of a sudden you need something else to produce your, your your electricity. And on a day like that, gas is upwards towards 50% of uh, or, or a part of the day where you have no wind. Uh, we go back uh, to use gas, uh, natural gas. Um, in terms of uh, European fuels, uh, this is a, a, a breakdown and you can see just pick out natural gas there, 25% for Europe in total. And the Irish figure is uh, thirty over thirty percent. So you know we're above average in terms of we're above the class average in terms of gas use for energy. Um, about two thousand and sixteen, SEAI were revising their biomass and bioenergy uh, feedstock um, uh, document, and uh, they hadn't considered grass. And uh, we encourage them to, to to look at grass as a uh, as a replacement uh, as a feedstock for for uh, AD. And uh, 
they came up with a figure to show that there was a, repla a, a potential to replace a quarter of a fossil fuel gas, which was a fairly stunning figure for them. We think it's even more. But if you look at where the feedstocks come from, green is grass, basically. The other feedstocks are brilliant and we have to get, you know, use more of them. But if you get the, the sewage sludges and the slurries and the food wastes, you know, you, you will you will probably replace 5% of your gas. So that was a very interesting study. Um, grass uh, land use in Ireland, grassland is 81% uh, of our land area, rough grazing, rough grass, 11%, arable is only 8%. So we're non-typical in, in, in Europe. Chagas have a programme to promote grass production and uh, it's called Grass 10. And basically that's, you know, manage your grass to get 10 tonnes of dry matter per hectare. Now you have to, if you want to produce a, a, a feedstock for, for bioenergy, it has to be done in a sustainable manner. And uh, more recently, red clovers and multi-species are becoming very uh, uh, topical um, uh, in that sense. Uh, just, you know, the hidden hectares is the concept that uh, I'll throw out there that um, the grassland can produce 10, 12 tonnes uh, of dry matter per hectare. And, uh, you know, the average production is a lot lower. In Grange, we would be averaging over 12 tonnes a hectare. And uh, that land is basically across the hedge. And because the farmer manages it in, in a way that suits him, one crop of hay taken in July and the bales are still there in, in uh, the end of August. Uh, he's, he, he manages, that's the way he manages it. But that's a lost opportunity for, for producing uh, feed, uh, biomass, or sorry, um, feedstocks for, for AD. Our Grange plant is a very conventional plant, concrete tanks, one is a digester, one is a digestate tank. That's the, the tank that's been insulated and clad and gas collection on top. We have external feeding system where we mix slurry and uh, silage. Uh, uh, that's the, the, the uh, pump uh, uh, room and the control room. It's a 1500 cubic meter digestion vessel. We pre make we, we uh, have equipment to pre-mix the liquid and solid feedstocks, mechanical mixing in the digestion, digestion vessel. Originally where we were to, uh, to put in a 150 kilowatt CHP plant, but, um, and use, uh, uh, use some of the electricity, export the balance and use the heat in our bioscience building. But uh, the move has been towards biomethane and that's the route that we are going and we're just waiting to put in our upgrader at the moment. Uh, in terms of feedstock mixes, um, while slurry is, a, is, is an important uh, feedstock, if we look at that uh, estimated uh, mix uh, for a particular quality of silage and, and slurry, uh, we would have 9.3 tonnes a day of silage, 14.5 tonnes a day of slurry, but most of the gas comes from the from the silage. And if it was CHP output, it, 126 of the 150 would be from the silage and 24 from the slurry. Now that's it's not that it, it, it's a, a a large land area and our plant would not be considered uh, big in European terms. Uh, the average farm size in Ireland is 32 hectares. This plant would take all the silage, no cattle on the farm, multiple cuts of silage from 70 hectares, and the winter slurry from upwards towards a thousand cattle. Now, just in terms of availability. We did an expression of interest uh, in the local paper looking for 60 hectares in total. We have some area ourselves that we would dedicate, but we look for 60 hectares in total, minimum parcel size 10 uh, within, a, within a transport distance of 10 kilometers of Grange. And logistically that's you know readily uh, achievable. Uh, 15 farmers replied, total area on offer was 704 hectares. The average, average area offered was 47. Uh, seven farmers indicated that could supply exactly 60 hectares, which suggested that they had more area that they'd be prepared to to uh, to to um, uh, uh, give over uh, to uh, feedstock production. Um, two farmers indicated that they had 103 and 82, but basically we were oversubscribed by a factor of 12. So we're in the middle of uh, mead, uh, tillage, uh, very popular tillage area, very top, top popular dairy area. I think we have three 500 cow plus herds within that 10 kilometer radius. So, you know, I think the message has to be that, you know, potentially there is feedstock out there from those, um, uh, we'll see it called the hidden hectares. 
If we take the harvest hinterland of 10 kilometres, the total area in there is 31,400 hectares. The agricultural area on average is 66% of total and grass area is 92% of ag area. And if we just capture 10% of that area, we would only be looking at uh, 1,906 hectares. And if we improve the dry matter output by five tonnes a hectare, so above above what's uh, by managing the, the 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 ground in a more appropriate manner, um, that would provide the uh, resource a feedstock resource for ten grains plants, and that's with no reduction in milk or meat output. So there's a you know there's a large amount of hidden hectares uh, out there. Ireland has been looking at AD for a long time. This is a um, uh, an Institute of Engineers and Chagas uh, uh, event that happened uh, over 30 years ago in Johnstone Castle. There was a small AD plant working in Loch Sheel and, uh, and the main aim there was uh, to, to help the management of um, pig manure where there was a high concentration of pigs in County Cavan. And the, 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 the summary from Tygo Flaherty at that stage was the best solution in handling slurry in the Loch Sheelan area was to establish a full-scale central treatment plant along the lines of the plant at Lintorp in Denmark. All we would have to look at is see what Denmark has done in the intervening years. You know, they have a, a, a target at the moment to actually go to 100% um, renewable gas. And there are things happening in Ireland. Um, that's uh, uh, a truck using... Uh, uh, compressed uh, natural gas, which is directly replaceable by, by methane, and an example was used uh, with transporting meat to Europe. Uh, other transport companies uh, or businesses have natural gas uh, trucks, Dixon Transport and Panda Waste. Again, can be directly uh, that natural gas can be directly substituted with uh, renewable biomethane. And tractor manufacturers, and in particular New Holland, have. Um, uh, natural gas uh, tractors available. Just land use, some interesting historical figures just before I finish. Um, and this is, uh, uh, these figures are produced from uh, my colleague, Kevin Hanrahan, uh, looking at the uh, tillage area in Ireland for wheat, oats and barley since the 1850s. And uh, uh, way back then we had about 600,000 hectares of oats. Uh, and uh, gradually a reduction, some peaks there for the uh, uh, the world wars that happened over the years. But um, the next slide uh, shows what those oats were used for. Basically, it took a hectare of oats to feed a horse in 1850. That's what that was where we produced our, our energy. Uh, we got better uh, the, uh, at producing oats over the years. The agronomy improved uh, and uh, we had a consistent number of horses, but we, we were able to dedicate less oats, uh, less land uh, for producing the material. After, in the 1950s, you know, internal combustion engines took over. So the, the number of horses uh, dramatically reduced. Uh, oats continued to drop off. I think we produce about 30,000 uh, hectares of oats at the moment. So, you know, massive change in uh, in the area. And uh, like, it's relatively short period, uh, you know, where, where that change has actually, actually happened. Just a couple of other interesting, we talk about red clover uh, as, it's, as it's almost, a, you know, a, a new crop. Uh, the Drawhead Independent in the local paper in 1935, Two companies uh, um, advertising uh, red clover. Uh, red clover makes its own nitrogen. Red clover would seem to be a very uh, uh, useful um, component of any feedstock mix for uh, an AD to ensure that uh, you're conforming to the uh, renewable energy uh, directives. Um, finally, just, uh, you know, assembling grass at scale has been done before in Ireland as well. We had a grass drying industry uh, in the uh, 60s and 70s and early 80s. Uh, I think the last grass dryer managed to keep going into, into the early uh, 90s. But um, grass, dried grass was used as an animal uh, a protein for pigs and poultry. Uh, and these guys were, you know, operating at uh, what would be considered very impressive scales. Uh, you know, assembling uh, materials at um, at, uh, um, at at large at large quantities, um, and uh, that's the equivalent of forty grange uh, plants. You know, and that, that was done when technology was 
a lot less uh, sophisticated than uh, what we have uh, at, the, at the moment. Um, that was a picture from 1970-72. What are the current targets in Europe? Uh, Following the, the the problems in the the Ukraine, uh, the the Europe has come out with some um, a new new direction as regards where we should be with uh, uh, renewable gas, and Ireland has has followed up uh, with a target of five point seven terawatt hours by twenty thirty. Uh, that's about ten percent of of our of our gas use, and that's what uh, Europe wants. Uh, that would be the equivalent of 1,700 plants the size of Grange. I do think if the industry develops, it, there'll be larger plants. Uh, but um, it's a, it's it's a, 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 I would say it's an impressive target. But the policies are not there yet to uh, to make these plants uh, happen. A number of plants would be through planning permission, uh, but um, they're just waiting to see for some uh, more clarity on where the market might go. But what is interesting, we're a, we have a European interconnected gas grid and Irish producers could produce gas and sell it to international uh, customers. And they would be act people, I know people who are actively looking at that route to market. Uh, and uh, maybe we'll have to play catch up uh, within within the country. Just in terms of the land area, the land area required for the feedstock production is only 120,000 hectares. We had 600,000 hectares of oats in 1850 for energy. Uh, we would have, this would be a massive industry uh, and a massive contribution to our uh, overall energy sustainability. Uh, it's only 3% of agricultural land and that's not going after hidden hectares at all. So um, I think, you know, the, 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 there is a good opportunity opportunity there. In fact, I think the cattle slurry element uh, of the mix would be a bigger challenge because that would require the winter slurry when the cattle are in from 1.3 million cattle. And we have about seven and a half million cattle in the country. So actually going after the slurry is probably logistically a bigger, a bigger uh, uh, problem. That's And I say the 5.7 terawatt hours is equivalent to 10% of our natural gas use. Ireland is a small energy user in European terms. We use about 1% of the energy that Europe uses. So we have a small problem to solve. And, uh, you know, uh, I showed an earlier slide where most of our energy is imported. Uh, when we do get our act together, we should be able to uh, produce a lot more of that uh, internally. And, you know, wind and solar and gas, I think, well, renewable gas will be important uh, components. Uh, the European target is 35 billion cubic metres of biomethane by 2030. Uh, and that's about 9% of total European gas use. Denmark has the highest percentage, percentage of renewable gas at the moment, uh, with 25% uh, uh, of their gas being renewable. Uh, they have a target of 75% by uh, 2030 and 100% by 2034. I think uh, they've actually ramped up that uh, uh, target and they say now that they sh they aim to be at 100% by, by, by 2030. The Irish resource, just talk about the hidden hectares. We target 10% of the hidden hectares. We would could service 2,240 Grange plants and that's with no milk or meat reduction. So that, that would over... Uh, uh, that would oversubscribe our 5.7 terawatt hour target, which needed 1,700 plants. I know it takes policy and takes, uh, uh, you know, a, a major program of mobilization. Um, it would provide 5% of total energy demand and no reduction in milk or meat. 20% uh, of the hidden hectares, you know, you scale it up. There's a large resource out there and it can be part of uh, the solution for renewable energy, provide an uh, an opportunity for farmers to become feedstock producers or cooperative of farmers to become plant operators and also then the associated uh, benefits, co-benefits. You have carbon dioxide uh, available, biogenic uh, CO2. Uh, once you clean up the biogas, uh, you, you have CO2 available to replace uh, CO2 that's uh, manufactured primarily as a byproduct of the the nitrogen fertilizer industry uh, and the nitrogen fertilizer industry at the moment is uh, 
relatively dormant because of the price of natural gas, which is the biggest uh, uh, component of the, the production of nitrogen fertilizer. And also the uh, challenge of the use of nitrogen, uh, the, the environmental challenges are, uh, you know, driving people to look at a better use of clovers, multi-species. And we're really going back, reinventing the wheel in terms of uh, better use of uh, clovers and relearning some of the lessons from, uh, you know, up to 100, uh, 100 years ago. Uh, you've got uh, carbon sequestration in the production uh, and management of the lands producing uh, feedstocks. You've got the digestate as a fertilizer replacement. Okay, some of the fertilizer would be used uh, to produce the, the, the feedstocks, but there, uh, there is additional fertilizer available. And of course, then the other opportunities to go after some of the, 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 the higher value components like uh, uh, the, the, the uh, biorefinery glass project, uh, 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 looked at. So I, 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 I leave it at that. Thank you.